Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. A special uh, good morning to all those watching on uh, the video link. Um, I'm covering for Marg, who's taking a well-earned break. Uh, Marg, if you're watching this, turn it off and stop thinking about church. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name's the Reverend Paul Cody. Uh, my thanks to Marg and the whole team for inviting me to... Can you not hear? I'll try and lean in and project. Is that a little bit better? Okay, okay. Um, yes, thank you to Reverend Marg for inviting me to be here today. So let us begin our worship. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we stand to sing our first hymn, Number 88 in the books, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Please be seated. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, 
forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God, grant us pardon and forgiveness for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we have the Gloria. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into, into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, whatever they provide. For the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me, and whoever rejects you, rejects me. 
And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I better pull this down a little bit, being a shorty. I wonder how the disciples felt. And then there were the 70, 72 others. How did they think? What did they feel? when Jesus spoke these words to them. One of the amazing things about Jesus' ministry is the way in which he sent out the disciples to preach. As we know, they often misunderstood his message. Often they were unforgiving and they were filled with self-ambition. And there was a time when they were reprimanded by him when he, they drove away the mothers and the children from him. Yet despite all this, he trusted them to represent him and to go ahead of him. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. What did he mean by this? I think it's quite self-explanatory, really, don't you, in the world we live in today, particularly. There's a lot going on out there, a lot that Jesus wouldn't agree with, a lot that we as Christians don't agree with. And all we can do is to stand up for Christ in the midst of all this. Even, then, even though we are called names at times. He tells them, too, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. They had a really important task to carry out. Because, you see, there were so many, and there still are, who needed to hear the message and so few to carry out the task of communicating the message. Jesus explains to them that they weren't to be cluttered up with material things and stressing about things that, on the whole, don't really matter. And they should travel light. This made me smile. How many of you can go away even for a weekend and travel light. Not me, that's for sure. What if it rains? What if the sun's out? Will that pair of shoes go with that pair? With that, You know where I'm coming from, don't you? But we shouldn't be distracted. We should con concentrate on the task ahead, as they were told to concentrate on their task. It's an important message, and as many people as possible should hear it. If they don't accept it, that's fine. We're not here to convert. We're here to tell them about Jesus. And if they don't want to listen once we've told them and they make their own decisions, that's fine. Because we are to plant the seed through Christ's love, and then it needs to be watered, but they need to accept first. They were to proclaim and live the peace and reconciliation 
that was part of the kingdom message. If you think about it, if Jesus had waited until their theology was perfect and their PR image was acceptable and their communication skills were well honed, he could probably have never sent them out. They were vulnerable and they risked failure, just as we do too. And I reckon if Jesus waited until we were theology perfect, he would be waiting a long, long time. I was licensed as a reader in 1999. I don't know where those years have gone. And it's important that we carry on learning, whatever our role in the church. It doesn't have to be standing up here at the front. Every part of the church has people in it, volunteers mostly, who do the work of Christ. And each and every one of you is so, so important to carry the message of Christ forward. Never, never undervalue your contribution. When they returned to Jesus, full of joy at the marvellous things that had happened, the people they had healed, etc., he had to remind them, hang on there. Don't get over boastful. Because you see, it was by his grace that they had become channels of his message. And that this same grace had inscribed their names in heaven. And it is by his grace that each and every one of us becomes channel of his message. We are Easter people, and yet we're still weak. We're vulnerable, and we're confused if we trust in our own ability. In John 15, verse 5, it says, Without Jesus, we can do and be nothing. Yet he still calls us and he equips us for his service. How then can we preach his truth? How can our lives reflect his compassion? And how can we live like lambs in this wolfish world where it's so, so easy for us to be affected by the materialistic philosophy, which is all around us. It's not easy, is it? We struggle. Life is not all plain sailing. And certainly life as a Christian is definitely not all plain sailing. We need to continually remember that we have Jesus on our side, though. We need to read the scriptures regularly, to pray regularly, to meet together regularly. And even if we can't find the right words to pray sometimes, just to be still and to listen to God can and is enough sometimes so that we open up the communication channels again. If you read the passage from Galatians on this week's reading sheet, when you take it home, for you watching online, it's Galatians 6, verses 7 to 16. In this reading, Paul challenges the Galatians to think straight, to resist those who offered a softer, safer version of the gospel. They were talking about circumcision, and some thought that you had to be circumcised to follow Christ. But the important thing is not the circumcision. It was what was going on inside each and every one of those Jews who became Christians. 
we need to understand the life and love of Christ. That's what matters. Not some symbol. It's what we say, what we do, how we live, how we treat others. Paul is reminding them that Jesus died on the cross and he boasts about the immense love of God. In comparison, those who boast about religious status boast about nothing really. Paul's personal experience of knowing this love of God has made him a new creation. And this is the crux of faith for Paul, to become a new creation. When we are made new, whole and vibrant and living in Christ, God also given us the opportunity to be changed from the inside, how we think, how we feel, how we react to situations. When Jesus sent out those 70 he gave them specific guidance. As Jesus sends us out to proclaim his word, let's be focused on the central message. And that's the message of love and God's love for us. And let's show, let's strive to show that love to each other, Christians and non-Christians alike. God's love is there to be shared. Actions speak louder than words. May our outward actions reflect the changes that he makes within us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Our next hymn is How Deep Is Your Love? Sorry, How Deep Is the Father's Love? Let's stand to sing.
Let us pray. Lord God, you are the Father of all people, and we bring our prayers, knowing that you will hear us and help us. We pray for the whole family of your church. Grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith and always show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you, to those who are finding it difficult to have faith because of personal hardship or tragedy, to those who are made to suffer for their faith. Let your Holy Spirit support them, and may all Christians stand firm in the hope that your kingdom of love will come in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country. Let your love surround the Queen and her family. Give wisdom and guidance to our statesmen and leaders and to all who have responsibility in education, in industry and in commerce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are ill, those who are sad and those who are hurt in any way. In a moment of silence, we pray, pray especially for those known to us. Let your love surround them and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for one another. We think this morning of Brenda, Jane, Milo and Rachel as they are confirmed into your church and continue their journey of faith. Help us to grow together in faith and love, rejoicing in your unconditional love for us and knowing that we can bring our prayers to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us stand to declare our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. We now offer each other a sign of that peace.
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. And by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your own image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bounds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us in the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favor on your people, and in your mercy hear their cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Saint Nicholas, Saint Peter, Saint Mary, Saint Elizabeth, and all your saints at your table in your kingdom. 
where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The Lord welcomes everyone to join him at his table. When you're coming forward, if you choose to do so, uh, we do have gluten-free wafers and we do have uh, bread wafers and wine. If you don't want the wafer dipped in the wine, just signal that to me with your hand like so. And if you wish to come forward for a blessing rather than join in the elements of communion, just come forward with your hands by your sides. And of course, the children are very welcome to come forward and join in also. And you at home, thank you again for joining us around this table.
Let us pray together. Lord, we have shared your bread and received your life by the power of your Spirit. Keep us always in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before we come to a close here, I do have some notices. Um, so first ones are the bands of marriage, and these are for the first time of calling. If any of you know any just cause or impediment why these people should not be joined in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. So I'm calling the bands of James Alexander Clifford Jones, single of Stafford, and Nicole Susan Crawley, also single of Stafford, as well as the bands of Christopher George Bowsher, single of Codsall, and Claire Louise Paget, also single of Codsall. Shall we pray for their love? Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of love and the blessing of marriage. Please give these happy couples all that they need to continue in the love you have blessed them with now and forever. Amen. We have our bright yellow notices sheet. I would like to point out one of them in particular. It's coffee Cake and Chat is on the first and third Mondays of every month from 10 a.m. till 12 noon in the parish rooms. The next one will be tomorrow, the 4th of July. And Whistlefish greeting cards will be on sale for the first session of each month. I would also like to thank Annie and Graham on the sound and vision back there. Uh, uh, thanks to Pat over on the organ, thank you very much. And uh, thanks to Jackie for her message. And I was told, uh, thanks to um, a little birdie, that there was going to be no tea and coffee today. But that has been fixed, thanks to Roger and Ian. And also thank you to Annie, uh, our church warden, and tech support and intercessor, a lot of hats on today, Annie, and Evelyn um, for running the show and uh, reading uh, the Bible passage today. And thank all of you for being here and uh, being online. It's lovely to serve you. If there's any way we can serve you better, please do feel free to let me or Reverend Marg know. I think that's all the notices today. Anyone else got any notices? Nope. Okay. Let's stand to sing our final hymn, which is number 503, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised.
Almighty God, thank you for all your generosity towards us and your people's generosity towards your church in all that they give, their time, their talents, their prayers, their presence, and this money. We ask that it be used to heat, light, maintain, staff, and grow your church in accordance with your holy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all again for joining me around the Lord's table, and thanks to Reverend Mark for inviting me to step in once again. Till we meet again, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created, and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all people. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, all those you love, all those for whom you pray this day and always. Amen. When you go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.